हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू सेवेंथ नीट पी जी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर रिकॉल क्वेश्चन डिसकाशन बट बिफोर डिसकाशन वन थिंग टू टेल एवरी वन दिस टाइम एग्जाम वॉज नॉट गिवेन बाई मी एक्चुअली नॉट एटेंडेड बाई मी सो इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर मी टू सेग्रीगेट द क्वेश्चन हुईच वन इज फॉर मॉर्निंग सेशन एंड हुईच वन इज फॉर इवनिंग सेशन बिकॉज आई एम रिसिविंग रिप्लाई फॉर मल्टीपल जूनियर्स about the asked question so it will be better if you can comment down what are the morning question remaining and what are the evening question so that i can discuss separately otherwise i have to discuss all the questions together there is no other option okay so coming to question number 61 which of the following instrument is needed to put the stent showing below so one x ray image was given and just see the metallic impression of one stent inside the abdomen it is ab from above the cervix symphysis up to the loin or lumbar area so this is nothing but dj stent this is dj stent so to put this dj stent which instrument is required so first you have to go through the bladder then you have to enter into the ureter so first cystoscope followed by ureteroscope so better instrument the best answer is cysto ureteroscope not only ureteroscope not nephroscope or usg guided it is through bladder followed by ureter this is cysto ureteroscope is needed to put the digestion inside question number 62 a boy brought for medical legal examination he was claiming to be 18 years but suspected to 16 years or vice versa age was there means there was dyssynchrony or asynchrony between the mentioned age and suspected age and the question asked name the x ray to confirm the age medical legally so to confirm whether it is 16 or whether it is 18 among the option the better options will be wrist joint and knee joint so the answer is wrist and knee joint patient presented with pain abdomen and reducible hernia was there first that becoming irreducible for last 7 days or 1 week so next line of management so first this hernia was reducible but now it became irreducible so this is kind of urgency in this case you have to go for omphalectomy also known as umbilical excision with hernioraphy or med may whatever option was there so omphalectomy means excision of this excess umbilical skin followed by hernioraphy or placement of mesh is a good next line of management for this patient this should not be conservative because strangulated hernia can be there there may be gut strangulation inside the uh, inside the hernia not only umbilical excision or omphalectomy because there may be further recurrence uh, this is also not the option the better or best option should be omphalectomy also uh, or umbilical excision with hernioraphy or mesh okay so this omphalectomy is known as umbilical excision now question number 64 a 20 year old sexual assault victim was examined in court in camera other public not allowed it implies state for what question this is closed proceeding in camera in camera proceeding this is closed proceeding okay this is in camera examination where other public is not allowed coming to next question question number 65 identify the signs so this x ray image was given here you can see one metallic circular shadow in this area but if you look carefully in this shadow there is you can appreciate two border one border is seen here in this this is nothing but bar, button battery and this button battery actually 
gives a impression of double ring sign one inner ring and outer outer ring because of the structure of battery metallic structure of the battery so this is double ring sign for metallic battery battery impaction so button battery impaction in the esophagus just below the crico pharynx okay so this is the answer now your another question in your mind is what is triple sign and what is thumb sign so this is thumb sign just look at here one thumb like projection in this area in the epiglottis area so this is suggestive of epiglottitis acute epiglottitis this is also medical emergency and this sign this is called this is actually stipple and see one shadow here like stipple so this is stipple sign seen in croup also known as acute laryngotracheobronchitis so thumb sign in seen in epiglottitis and stipple sign in seen in croup or acute laryngotracheobronchitis coming to question number 66 unmarried 14 year old girl a rape victim presented at 22 weeks of gestation 22 and comes for actually medical termination or pregnancy or MTP. So you have to identify the true statement about this scenario. So this girl is uh, 20, 14 year age, a rape victim and currently she is at 12, 22 weeks of gestation. True statement for this, just see the MTP Act, MTP Act amendment in 2021. This was 1971. This amendment was done in 2021. Here you can see the gestational age limit for rape survivor, survivor is 24 weeks. But for 24 weeks, for medical termination of pre uh, uh, medical termination of pregnancy, there are two doctors' opinion is needed after 20 weeks but below 24 weeks and up to 20 weeks one doctor is sufficient one doctor for 22 24 weeks two doctor and medical board approval is needed after 24 week comprising of your sonologist pediatrician one question was there i think lawyer option will not be there so those lawyer question of lawyer or advocate is based on this scenario medical broad actually i have already discussed so this is the scenario okay and if you breach the woman's confidentiality then there can be imprisonment for one year or fine okay so let's see this question now mtp can be done in rape victim till 24 absolutely yes so this is the true statement now uh, see the other statement only one doctor opinion no now the currently lady is in 22 weeks so in between 20 to 24 weeks there is need of not one two doctor only one only done if risk of life no this is humanitarian background of rape victim it can be done even without risk of life okay mtp can be done after permission of the medical board no in 22 weeks permission is not needed two doctor is sufficient okay so the correct statement only is mtp can be done in rape victim till 24 weeks 67 ards patient not responding to oxygen what is the role of interleukin 8 in ards so this interleukin 8 is also known as neutrophil chemotactic factor so the name as the name implies what is the action neutrophil chemotactic factor yes definitely it helps in recruitment of neutrophil that is why it is known as neutrophil chemotactic factor interleukin 8 so the ards pathogenesis the role of interleukin 8 is recruitment of neutrophil Coming to question number 68, which one is false about von Willebrand disease? So there is three type of von Willebrand disease, one, two, and three. And as all of you know, two is quantitative, sorry, qualitative defect for von Willebrand disease. And one and three is quantitative defect, quantitative defect. But in type 1 von disease there will be only mild deficiency of von Willebrand factor but in type 3 there will be severe deficiency so von Willebrand type 1 mild deficiency mild symptom severe deficiency severe symptom and this is qualitative depending on the quality not about the quantity so let's choose the option which one is false von Willebrand disease type 1 is mostly associated with severe billing never it is 
rather mild deficiency with mild symptom so this is wrong option so this can be the answer because the false statements is asked von Neumann type 3 is most severe in children yes because it is severe deficiency von Neumann type 2 is more activity related rather than level yes because it is activity or quality related so this is qualitative defect not quantity so activity related level is uh, not quantity or level related so this is also right statement uh, type 3 has severely low von Willebrand a factor level yes it is also true the incorrect statement is von willebrand disease type 1 is mostly associated with severe bleeding no it is mild bleeding so this is the answer number a 69 a patient presented to iopd after three years of cataract surgery and slit lab examination is showing this here you can see multiple vacuolated structures pulse like structure so this is nothing but L snake pulse. So I think all of you are aware of this term L snake pulse. So this is suggestive of PCO posterior capsular opacification that is delayed surgical complication after cataract surgery. So treatment is NDR laser, all of you know. So this is posterior capsular opacification image L snake pulse, one of the late complications of cataract surgery, and this is the slit lamp finding. Coming to question number 70, the submerged portion of the iceberg shows which disease. So this is the submerged portion below the level of water. This is actually all those asymptomatic infections or carrier infection. Carrier level is denoted by this submerged portion. And this exposed portion is basically the clinical, the clinical patients or clinically detected patients. So for among these options, the in, for influenza, most of the cases can be asymptomatic carrier. So, uh, the best option for submerged portion of iceberg shows by this can be influenza. In the next segment, we are going to discuss 8 to 1, uh, sorry, 7 to 1 to 80. So, stay tuned and please comment below which questions are already left. Otherwise, I am going to discuss two sets of questions together, both morning and evening. Thank you.